continuing on with our little mini-series of talking about Vancouver Canucks prospects, let's go over Cole Lind. Because we talked about Ole Olevi before. We talked a little bit about some of the other guys, a lot of the new recent guys on the team. But Cole Lind is a guy who still exists and who hasn't been given the spotlight as much as he has been two years ago, specifically, when he was drafted by the Vancouver Canucks in the 2017 NHL entry draft. Yeah, that was two years ago. Oh my goodness, it doesn't feel that long. Cole Lind was drafted 33rd overall in the second round of the 2017 draft, and right away, when people saw Cole Lind slipping in the draft boards because he was supposed to go around the 20 spot, people were saying, hey, why isn't anyone taking Cole Lind? Or Jim Benning was saying that. People kind of memed that phrase a little bit afterwards, but he fell to Vancouver in the second round, Vancouver snagged him up, and right away... People identified Cole Lind as a potential top six lethal goal scoring machine who could potentially be in the NHL and be a second line power play guy and overall just have a great offensive tool set. That's not something that people were surprised about because in Cole Lind's draft year, he did post 87 points in 70 Kelowna Rockets games. And in his draft plus one year, he was on pace to keeping up with Cody Glass. He had 95 points in 58 games, and a lot of Canucks fans back then were saying, hey, we didn't take Cody Glass at fifth overall, we got Pedersen instead who's lighting up the Swedish Elite League. If we wanted Cody Glass, we have this guy named Cole Lind who was drafted in the second round who has the same amount of points as Cody Glass. And granted, Cody Glass does have a much better defensive and two-way game than Cole Lind does, but the point is, Canucks fans a year ago were so hyped for Cole Lind because he was keeping up with guys like Cody Glass on the score sheet, and he was taken in the second round while a guy like Elias Pettersson was tearing up the main Swedish league, that it looked like we had a really big steal with our second round 2017 pick back then. However, come his first year with the Utica Comets, in the AHL, Cole Lynn did take quite a bit of a step back in terms of what most people would perceive was his development track record. 17 points in 51 Utica Comets games under Trent Cull, and Cole Lynn is not necessarily defined by most as the same top six potential player that he was a year ago. A year ago, he was tearing up the WHL, and we had all the reason to believe that he could become a legitimate 20-goal scorer in the NHL, but his most recent season in his Draft Plus 2 gives us reason to believe otherwise. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say that Cole Lind is terrible, but I will sit here and say that the potential that we believed Cole Lind had, it's different now than it was a year ago. Because around this time, going into their Draft Plus 3 year, this is around the time where you can start to get an idea of how good prospects are developing and how good they're going to be going forward. So Cole Lind going next into his second year in the AHL, he's got to see some significant improvement if he still wants to have that label as a potential top 6, middle 6, 20 goal NHL guy. Because he showed us in the past that he does have that label attached to him, and he's worthy of it. But playing under a Trent Call system that didn't allow him to really play the way that we thought he would, it sparks some reason to believe otherwise. And that's why this next season is going to be so important for Cole Lind. And if he's able to get himself 30 points in the AHL, I think that's going to be a really good step in the right direction towards establishing NHL potential for this player. Because we've seen it in the past, a ton of CHL guys who get a lot of points at 18, 19 years of age aren't able to become NHL players, and that's just the truth. It happens all the time. But Cole Lind is a player who we all wanted to be better than 17 points in 50 games, that if he's able to be better next season, then we all have reason to believe that that hype that we had for him a year ago should still be happening. Because Cole Lind was one of the rookies that didn't have an easy time under Trent Cole 
in the AHL. Jonah Gajevich was a part of that crew too. In fact, the only two rookies who actually did well with Utica, Jonathan Dolan, who was traded, and Lucas Yashik, who I already made a video about. I see him as a potential NHL bottom six player. But Cole Lind is different. Jonah Gajevich is different. He has a skill set that is NHL projectable in that he is a force on the ice who creates a safe work environment for the players around him. Cole Lind isn't like that. He's not a big body who's able to hit people and play aggressively in terms of physicality. He's more of a goal scorer. He's more of an offensive tool, an offensive prowess player. So... If you put him in the NHL in year one and he's not showcasing his tools that make him an offensive prowess player, there's a lot of questions to be asked. But again, he is 20. So going into the next AHL season, Cole Lind has opportunities here that he needs to fulfill in order to establish NHL potential that is legit. And if he's going to do that, I'm saying 25, 27 points. It's an increase from his 17 last season, but... Linear increases at the pro game are better than no increases at all. So, that pretty much wraps up my talk here on Cole Lind. I really want him to succeed. I really want him to fulfill that potential that he had a year ago. So, I hope he does that. And it all starts with next year. Hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.